You're watching News Made Easy. I'm Anandya Chakravarti. Omicron is exploding in uh, India. In Delhi, it is spreading and Mumbai. It's spreading extremely fast and must be spreading in other parts of India as well. It's only in the cities that uh, genome sequencing is being done of the samples. And that is why it's easier to make out whether it's Omicron or whether it's the old Delta. And you know that the Delhi health minister recently said that 84% um, of the cases that have come up in the last two days, and remember, that's when the numbers have exploded, um, are of Omicron variety. He also said that it's milder than uh, Delta, and we know that, not just from India, but from across the world. And uh, why is this both, uh, both bad news, because it's spreading so fast, but also very good news, because... The spread will mean that many more people will get infected, right? Within a household, for instance, if someone has Omicron right now, they are three times more likely to spread it to someone else in their own home than they had if they had Delta, all right? Three times. And Delta was pretty uh, transmissible as well. It was very contagious. Uh, so Omicron can also, as some people have said, come through a whiff of air that comes through to you if you're unmasked or your mask is not properly worn. So, uh, so chances of spreading are very, very high. We're seeing that happening. Record numbers across the world every single day. But hospitalizations have dropped. Deaths have dropped. And there has been a lag. Deaths and hospitalization lag by 7 and to 15 days, sometimes by a month. We've had almost two months of Omicron right now. It was first discovered in November in South Africa, where it went up and then went down. And in most cases, it was pretty mild. In the US and UK, uh, it came pretty early by the end of November and throughout December, it went uh, kept rising. And the data from there again tells us that it is much milder than, uh, uh, than Delta was. And the first uh, things that we've heard from labs, even before this real world studies and data could be collected, was already encouraging. And, you know, the, there is something called the Syrian hamster. Now, you know, hamsters are used in labs unfortunate creatures for testing and for looking at the progress of various diseases and the Syrian hamster a particular variety of hamster which is used in labs was very susceptible to COVID all other variants it showed very severe <clears throat> um, symptoms of COVID with all other variants except Omicron where its uh, symptoms have been pretty mild and in fact if someone had already a hamster had already been infected by a uh, by a SARS-CoV-2 variant, a COVID variant before, earlier, even 50 days later, they sh showed virtually no symptoms. So that was the first lab data which was showing that this is a milder version. Uh, there's data, but, you know, hamsters are different from human beings and uh, the studies from human beings would be different. But there is a study from Hong Kong, for instance, which took uh, lung tissue taken from uh, surgeries, right? discarded lung parts from surgeries, it took it and they tested and they found that inside the lung, Omicron replicates or reproduces 10 times slower than Delta or the Alpha variant, the original variant. And, and what that means is that our body's immune system gets much more time to fight it, which they didn't find with Delta. When Delta replicated, it replicated very fast inside the lung and then when our uh, immune system attacked it, it not just attacked the infected cells, destroyed the infected cells, but it also killed um, uh, cells which were not infected. It went into an overdrive and that caused, uh, uh, you know, runaway inflammation inside the lungs, causing the uh, people to become breathless, inability to breathe. They didn't get enough oxygen. And ultimately, various uh, uh, organs started failing, clots formed, and that's how uh, many deaths took place. And that is also one reason why so many people needed oxygen support during Delta. In the case of Omicron, that is not happening. On the other hand, it uh, multiplies much, much faster in the upper respiratory tract, which means that because the presence is so much more, it's going to be much more contagious. It's very, very likely that you'll spread it to someone else who's not masked and cannot stop these viruses from entering or protect themselves to a certain extent from entering. So that's the reason it is very, very contagious, but it is much less lethal when it comes to the lungs. So the uh, chances of you getting Omicron is very high, but chances of you 
getting a severe disease is relatively low. I'm not saying it is not there, but it is relatively low. Um, one real world, the largest real world data that we have is from the UK where they took about 5.3 odd, 5.3 lakh odd Omicron cases and 5.7 lakh um, co uh, Delta cases and compared what the impact is. And they found that chances of being hospitalized is about 50% lower with Omicron. Chances of getting, uh, you know, uh, hospitalized, being hospitalized reduces drastically. If you've got two doses of the COVID vaccine, it goes down to between 65 to 70%. Uh, and uh, if you've had a booster dose of the third dose, then the chances of being hospitalized drops by 80% or more, 80 to 90%. Now, that is a significant difference, right? These are significant differences which make a huge difference to how lethal, how dangerous the disease itself is. Because influenza also causes deaths, as you know. Influenza also causes uh, inf uh, hospitalization. So if Omicron turns out to be like that, then it is significantly not very different from a seasonal flu or even a common cold, which is caused by more than 200 odd viruses every year, rhinoviruses and various kinds of coronaviruses, which are not deadly. Right? Our body is immune to them. So one of the good things about Omicron is that it is spread very quickly. It, it's uh, in most cases, the, in, the symptoms will be mild, if at all. Omicron, 80% of cases turn out to be asymptomatic, as one study has shown in the UK, which is compared to 40% of cases in Delta. So 60% of people who got Delta showed some symptom, severe or moderate or mild. In Omicron, only 20% show any symptom and most are mild. Now you look at uh, Delhi, for instance, and you, as I told you that uh, in Delhi, the health minister has said that uh, Omicron is about 84% of the new cases in the last two days. These are early days. There are approximately, on 3rd of January, there were approximately 11,000 cases in Delhi, out of which only 7 were on ventilator support and 120 odd were on oxygen support, right? Uh, so, again, these are significant numbers because we do not know how many of these people are on oxygen support or on ventilator because they have COVID uh, caused by Delta or because they have Omicron. So, we don't know whether even one of them is there because of Omicron. In the US, UK, for instance, one third of those who are in ICUs, right? One third of those who are in ICUs are uh, people who are there with COVID. They are in ICU because of some other ailment. They were already in the hospital. So they're with COVID. They're not in ICU because of COVID. So that itself is interesting because the chances of uh, getting, uh, needing ICU support or emergency support is one third of Delta. And those who have been diagnosed with Omicron inside ICUs are not there because of Omicron, but because of some other ailment. So you clearly, uh, the severity of the disease is significantly lower than Delta, which was obviously much worse than the Alpha variant, the first variant that we saw. Now, what does that mean? That means that uh, Omicron could just rush through the population very quickly get uh, cause very few people to have symptoms significant symptoms and in a poor country like india where cough and cold is not even treated as a symptom they, you don't get a off day for having a sore throat or cough and cold in mo most uh, there's a very high chance that most people won't even know that they're infected but they'll get a significant amount of immunity natural immunity from a milder version of the disease which is not very different from uh, going and getting a vaccine where you have some mild symptoms, a bit of a headache, maybe some mild fever, body ache. So it's not very different from being vaccinated and getting immunity, is to get an Omicron immunity. Again, uh, let me warn and give this health warning that these are still early days. The data is coming in increasingly. The good thing about that is that the data, the interpretation assessment of Omicron has not changed from what it was in the early days in South Africa to what it is now in the UK and the US based on new data. That it is a less deadly version. If you look at what the German health minister has said, and remember in the middle of uh, December, he had given a warning that this could cause a massive problem to the health system. Recently, in the last few days, he has said that it is much milder. We're seeing lower number of ICU cases. Maybe they will drop pretty soon. And he's also said that masking helps with dealing with 
Omicron because it has it uh, those with Omicron have a lower viral load. Don't ask me what that means, but this is what has been reported in the papers that that is what uh, will protect people. So masking, making sure that your mask is tight, it could help you from Omicron, provided that uh, it is actually um, you know virtuous to be protected from Omicron. Whether it is desirable to be protected from Omicron, if Omicron is not going to create a severe disease in most people. Perhaps it is better for Omicron uh, to create immunity instead. Right? It is not going to go away. It's going to stay. It is going to be there. But it is not going to cause a deadly uh, disease. So if Omicron spreads, replaces Delta and other versions, and you get immunity because of that, even if Delta comes up every now and then over series, uh, various, and even a, a deadly version of it comes back every now and then, there'll be a higher degree of immunity in the population for the health system to deal with it. Because after all, you know, every year it is true that f flus happen and uh, people die of influenza. Uh, people die of various other reasons of viruses. They, severe disease is caused. Sometimes those with compromised lungs are uh, sent to hospitals. They need oxygen simply because of catching a cold. So this will happen. It's not going to disappear. But it is possible that this could be the end game for COVID-19. Omicron could end up being the milder version which kills and removes all of the less mild, the more deadlier versions. That's the show today. Keep watching News Click. Do like this video and share it as well.